realized uh, reading through some of the epistles how many times Paul says, I thank the Lord at every remembrance of you. And you can so tell a thankful heart just has to say, right? Because out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So I just, this is a little freebie. Use your words. You know, we say that to little children, use your words, but it's so important. There is power of life in words, isn't there? So that's why we're told to say thank you to the Lord. So let's just um, do what his word says. Be doers of the word and enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Father, we're so grateful to be here. This little snip and this little bleep in all of eternity, Lord God, we thank you that it matters, Lord. What you're doing here, Father God, could cut catapult us into a whole different area of life, of speaking, of feeling, of relating. And we thank you so much, Father God, that you show us in your word not only what to do, but how to do it and why to do it, Lord. We thank you. You're a good Father because you explain things to us in your word, Father. And we, we pray as we look into your word this morning that you would speak to our hearts deeply and that, Father, that word would not return to you void, but you would cause your your word to accomplish everything in our hearts and our lives, Father God, that you have sent this word to do in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's saints said, Amen. Amen. So it's just kind of exciting. I started cooking this last Sunday afternoon. And um, I call it the secret of thanksgiving because it is a, a nugget. It is something God tells us to do. As something we give, thanksgiving, so we give thanks. God always asks us to give something. He asks us to give our first fruits. He asks us to give so that he can bless us and multiply that. So he can rebuke the devourer. There's all kinds of warfare. And in thanksgiving, the fruit of our lips, he's asking us to give something to him. In order that he can bestow on you, he can rain down blessings upon you. Amen. So there is a secret to thanksgiving. And Philippians 4 is our scripture. Philippians 4, beginning at verse 4. 4 to 9. Rejoice. Let's read it together. Can we do that? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is a, a wonderful scripture that I really say, unless you've got it under your belt and memorized it and practice it, it is such a practical, practical present uh, thing to do that affects every single day. Amen? Because there's stress in the world. And uh, even science has caught up with the Word of God in so many areas. Uh, but it is, there is uh, books, there are many books being written about thanks, the power of thankfulness. And there's a book out there called Thank You Power. And it is a study that is uh, its conclusion about test subjects who were consciously grateful. So they made a habit of being grateful and being thankful. They felt better about their lives as a whole. And they were more optimistic, more energetic, more enthusiastic, more determined, more interested, more joyful. They felt stronger about handling challenges. They exercised more. They had fewer illnesses. They got more sleep. They made progress to, to more important personal goals. 
They were more likely to help someone else. They were perceived by others as more generous and helpful, and they were less envious of those who, who had more possessions. A related study showed they lived longer lives, had clearer thinking, had higher immunities, closer family ties, and greater faith. And a teacher, a Dr. Jeffrey Franz, sorry, surveyed 1,035 high school students. They had more friends, and I don't know what the standard is, but they're basically they had higher marks as well. So we look at the science, the benefits, and as I was going down this list, I thought, you know, the world adopts uh, the principles, basically, when they think they have discovered this, they've discovered lots of things, how singing, what singing does for people, what laughter does for people, and I'm going, yoo-hoo, the Word of God has been saying that for thousands of years, amen, but why do we feel better about our lives as a whole? It's because our lives are not our own, they were bought by a price, and our life is hid with in Christ, amen, our lives are hidden with Christ. We know God says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans of welfare and peace. We also know from the Psalm of David uh, that every day ordained for us was written in his book. So of course, we're going to feel better about our lives. He says, I know the plans I have for you because we're not anxious about our future. Amen. So no wonder we're more optimistic and more energetic because there's a joy that comes with that and the joy of the Lord is our strength. More enthusiastic, yeah, hello, enthusiasm. Enthusiastic means full of God. So we're going to be more enthusiastic about life, about the future, about hope, about what God is doing. Amen. So we'll be more joyful for the joy of the Lord is our strength. So no wonder we're going to be stronger and feel better physically and exercise more. Yeah, because our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. God lives on the inside of us. We realize we've been given a gift and we're going to have to give an account for our physical bodies. It's a temple. Amen. How many of you take care of your house? Well, how much more should we not take care of the house of the Holy Spirit? They get more sleep because God says, I give my beloved sleep. So, of course, if we are thankful and we thank the Lord that we have uh, more progress to meet our personal goals, because we're a race. And like Paul says, I press on to meet those goals. There is a goal that God has set before each and every one of us. And helping one another, we are part of the body. And God has purified us to the place where we're eager for good deeds. Have you marveled about that in your own life where you just go, why do I even do this? I know I don't do this uh, to get anything. It's hard work when you help other people and a lot of, there's no monetary value. It is because the God, of the God on the inside, that's who he was. That's who Jesus, that's what he did. He went about doing good and helping others, healing others and those who are oppressed of the devil. It's because of the God on the inside of us. So every single one of these um, points, I thought, God, it's because of you. Amen. So even if they have proven that even if non-Christians give, play it forward, there's all kinds of principles out like that where you'll get more. Because the principles of God work no matter what. But we have a handle on it. We've got the source on the inside. We're not just being thankful out there for whatever. Oh, I'm grateful for my family. We're thankful to God for all of these things because he's the giver of every good and perfect gift. And not only on the outside, but we have him living on the inside. Amen. You cannot be happy and be ungrateful. You cannot be happy and joyful. You can't have joy and be grumbling and be complaining and looking at what's not okay in your life. All happy people, all joyful people, anyone that you see has joy, you'll find this characteristic. They're thankful. They're thankful for what they have and who's around them. They're, they're just grateful. But even if you think, you know what, 
by nature, I'm kind of a melancholic person. I'll see the clouds or whatever. If that happens to be more your bent or your way that you learned growing up or whatever, God's word just tells you to do it. Amen? Amen. So even if we've never been given a good example and it's not kind of our nature, God tells us to, to work it. He says, just be thankful. Rejoice when? Why should we be thankful? This word says, when should we be thankful? When? Always. Always. And, and it's this repeating. It would be one thing if God said, rejoice in the Lord. But he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says, and again, I'll say to you, again, I'm going to repeat it. Read my lips. Rejoice. Give thanks. Amen. It's a good thing. So it tells us, just do it in your word. Why? Be because the word tells us to do it. Because God wants you to, there's a blessing in it. You'll start to feel blessed. You'll start to feel better. And uh, it says, why? Because the Lord is near. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And so we see here, uh, he talks about uh, gentleness and not being anxious about anything because those are joy stealers. They're anxiety and being uptight and being impatient with each other. Those kind of things are, are contrary to this grateful heart, to this thankful heart, to seeing the best and acting the best in a situation. So God is saying, uh, you who I'm right here, I'm on the inside of you and I'm near. If you want my presence to come and you want your blessing on your life, remember, it's not so much the neighbors are listening, it's God is here. God is here and we want to honor him. And that draws his presence. In Psalm 100, verse 4, I'm going to go there. It says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. And the Lord, it's the Lord is saying, uh, up here, lift your eyes when we get downcast and we start looking at circumstances. God is saying, Enter my gates with thanksgiving. Some people, if you've noticed, they just kind of plow into prayer by starting to bring the request. And it's like, you know what? There's a protocol to prayer. So enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Then the presence of the Lord, because the Lord says, I dwell in the praises of my people. So his presence is there. The Lord is near again. So we see this overlapping, the, the Lord's word confirming itself here in the word. That's a protocol of heaven because then the Lord is there. His manifested presence is around thankfulness and, and praise and worship and a grateful attitude is like a magnet to the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that will get rid of the presence of God, the favor of God, the blessings of God more than when you start recounting, just so you know, and all the things that went wrong with your day and your week and all the things you're feeling grouchy about, it's like... <sighs> Instead, you want the presence of the Lord, it's like... Oh, thank you, Jesus. And even the psalm, it says, for the Lord is good. He's never going to change. His faithfulness endures forever. One good thing is that God is here. He's in our midst. He's a good, good father. His love is tangible. His faithfulness will be forever and ever to all generations. You can't change that. Amen. And it gets our eyes on those things that are eternal and that last forever. So those are some good reasons why. And it says, uh, bring our petitions to the Lord with thanksgiving. Um, and then the peace that passes and transcends and garrisons our hearts and our minds, puts a guard over our hearts and minds. So there's a few things that happen when you give thanks. It brings God on the scene. It removes anxiety. 
It brings up there the presence of the Lord is promised. Amen. And then God says, and I'm just going to put a guard over your heart and your mind. I'm going to lock it in that, in that position uh, so that your outlook, Dave talked about perspective a few weeks ago. So your, go your outlook is a godly outlook. So no wonder we're told how important it is to choose at times. This is an easy thing to do when you wake up and the sun is shining and you got a holiday and you know you're going to your favorite spot, whether it's the mall or the beach. I pick the beach first. If it's raining, I'll go, so I'll go have coffee, Starbucks, maybe all these things, all your favorite things, but those are just outward things. But what if it's the opposite? You're fighting a sniffle and the weather's crappy and the, there's lots of things that you're just going, oh my goodness, I'm just, oh this day, oh Jesus help me. Well, he will help you. Thank you God that you are good. You are a good, good father. Your love endures forever. Your faithfulness to all generations. You got a master plan, Lord God. Thank you for this day because there's hidden blessings underneath it all that maybe I'm not seeing that because I'm going there, it's a rainy day, I'm going to have an opportunity that day. Amen. I did the one of the reasons in case you think I'm a shopaholic I haven't shopped for a year I spent all of I haven't even spent my last year's Christmas present but I love going to White Oaks Mall because I always 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 have awesome opportunities I have no idea why this is other than I'm hoping I'm exuding Jesus uh, but I went into Aerie and I went into La Senza uh, for somebody else to buy a present for somebody and <laughs> I meet this lovely girl from Africa, and uh, she just, she kept calling me milady, and uh, just said, darling, I just said, where are you from? And before you knew it, we were talking about Tanzania and doing a mission trip there, and at the end of it, we're hugging like we're sisters forever. Like, it's just so the favor of God, and that's why I, it's one of my favorite places to hang out, because we're to be the fragrance of life, and I go out of there so grateful, happier than anything if I'm swinging bags for me. It's the fact of just going like, God, I am so grateful you orchestrate my every step. Amen. So we can be thankful for those hidden blessings, those when we're looking to bless the Lord. See, when we're in this framework of being in the presence of God, because we're grateful for all, that we can actually be a blessing and buy somebody else a present and have an opportunity with somebody else. It's like, you can't pass joy around without getting some all over yourself. I am sure those beekeepers that go in and harvest the honey, I am sure they're just sticky. Amen. Hard to get in there and deal with honey and not, not get a, a little taste yourself. Amen. And that's what gratefulness and a thankful heart. I had the blessing, I have to say, just coming to my mind off the top of my head. My mom learned, she must have learned this, but I grew up and one of the, her favorite uh, songs was Count Your Blessings. And she was one to start at the crack of dawn and um, after being out late at night, I didn't always love her opera voice, with her Dutch accent, but, um, but it was a secret. It was a secret, and she had been through, I don't know how many challenges uh, physically with her, her body and just lots of things, but it was a secret she learned of uh, being grateful. And um, not allowing. And I think I'm thankful for my mom in that way. And, you know, we really have to, that garrison that comes over our hearts and minds, we have to guard. We have to willingly say, okay, God, you're garrisoning my mind, and I am not going there. And you, that is called the fruit of, of self-control. You'll find the fruit of the Holy Spirit here. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to all is because we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we can choose to yield to the Holy Spirit. We can choose to have a thankful heart. Amen. And we can cultivate it to a larger degree. Um, another little practical see everything God gives us is, is is very practical maybe we'll get that I'll, I'll say that for later for when or how how thankfulness actually works but thankfulness also increases our faith 
when we're told to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Let me just go um, quickly to the word because it's the word that is powerful and changes us. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, sorry, it's, nope, it's 92. For it is good. Yes, it is good to praise the Lord. And I wanted to read this out of the message. What a beautiful thing, God, to give thanks. I'm just going to read that part. What a beautiful thing, God, to thank you. What a beautiful thing, God, to give thanks. It's a beautiful thing to give thanks. Amen? And all we have to do is try it. To start every day, the first thing that comes out of my mouth, well, it doesn't matter what the temperature is and what I'm feeling like, it's like, thank you, God, for this new day. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your benefits, your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, God. I'm entering your gates with thanksgiving. What a beautiful thing, God, to give thanks. So God is wanting to have the beauty of the Lord just descend down upon you because there's something about that. We're exuding to the world. The joy, the enthusiasm, that we can reach our goals, hope, all these things. It's because we've chosen to have a thankful heart. Amen? And even when things have gone sour and gone wrong, we can say, Father, I thank you. You're a redeemer. You can turn this around and work it for good in my life. Thank you, God. I didn't go any farther. When you look back at your testimony, thank you, God. Yes, I, you know, maybe you made mistakes, wrong choices, whatever, but you say, thank you, God. Now I can use this, the very comfort that you've comforted me with. Now I can comfort others with that. Amen? Amen? So you're just even thanking God, not for every situation, but thanking him how he can turn it around. Even when you can't see how he's going to turn it around, you can say, God, I know that you can use this for something. Amen. He can take the, the most broken parts of our lives. The Lord has said to me one day, I can make, I make beautiful things out of junk. Isn't that something? Some of the most beautiful creations in art are, are just pieces of broken glass and pottery and everything else. And you go, wow, that is gorgeous. Why is that so beautiful? Amen. So it is a beautiful thing to give thanks. And the Lord wants us to discover that. So it, why? Because it builds faith. It builds faith. So you want an example of how does it build faith. When I come before the presence of the Lord and there's a very difficult situation, I look back at the past victories in my life where things looked hard and difficult and impossible. I think, God, you did this. I'm just going to use this example of this church. When it was a horribly rainy day and we had no money and there was a, a handful of us uh, calling it church and God said, go put an offer on that land and we hit roadblock after roadblock. Now I look back and I think, thank you, God. You came through. Amen. And lots of us remember here that when we just had the land, thank you, God, and the land got paid for. Thank you, God, we had enough money to build the foundation. Thank you, God, then the walls came. How are we going to get money for? Remember the roof was the big thing? Well, we look back and we go, the roof was a big thing. Thank you, Lord. You were faithful. We got our roof. Thank you, God. How are we going to fill all this stuff with bathroom stalls and the doors and all this? Thank you, God. The doors given. The bathroom stuff given. How many miracles have we gone through so far? So when we give thanks, when we're in the midst of a trial and a circumstance, we start saying, thank you, God, for all the other times, just like David did. David said, I thank you, God. When I had that bear attack me, you delivered me. And then the lion, another day, the lion came and attacked me. You gave me strength over that lion. 
I defeated the lion, I defeated the bear, and now this circumcised, uncircumcised Philistine is just another one. See how David built himself up in his holy faith by giving thanks. Thanks for past victories. So returning thanks for blessings already received increases our faith. Ha enables us to come to God with greater boldness, greater assurance, and now we say, and Lord, this too will be all for your glory. Amen. How tempting it is then to grumble, maybe because the lights have taken so long, we could start grumbling about that, but we keep saying, God, there's got to be a miracle in here somewhere. Thank you, God. We're getting the lights you wanted us to have in the first place, and we're being faithful. Amen. So thank you, Father, for the lights. Amen. We don't always know why things are taking a little longer, why this is a challenge, but when you start giving thanks for past victories, you're building your faith for the next victory. Amen? Amen. There's another good reason to give thanks. It encourages us. Uh, that nothing is too difficult for God. Thank you, God. Nothing is too difficult for you. And it, thankfulness increases our humility. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Only you can do this, God. It, as we give thanks to God for all of his blessings, we realize how dependent we are on God for everything. <laughs> everything. Thank you, God, for health. Thank you, God, for, for provision. Thank you, God, for God knows the future. There's times where the enemy wants me to be concerned about the growth of this church or whatever, and it's like, mm, not going there. Thank you, God. And then someone else comes along with that faith, and they're just so excited about what God's doing, and it's like that shot in the arm. So your thanksgiving heart does produce faith in one another, too. Amen? And your complaining can really affect somebody, make the sun, it'll be just like a great big cloud that comes and shadows the whole sun gone. Amen. So how important is our habit of thanksgiving? It's good for our emotions. Thanksgiving is good for your emotions. They say that is the strongest emotion causing the most incredible things going off in your brain God has so wired you with serotonin and melatonin and endorphins and all kinds of wonderful things that start exploding in your body and out of your brain when you give thanks. Amen. And did you know when you grumble and you complain, there is equally strong poisons, literal poisons being released into your physical. No wonder people that are like that, they're just going, I have no, I just don't feel very good. So, to give thanks, what a beautiful thing, Lord, to give thanks to you. What a beautiful thing it is. Oh, there's just so many promises. You'll have to read that Psalm 92 for yourself. Read it out of several different versions. Thankfulness increases our humility in Romans. Let me see here, Romans. We got this marked. Romans 1.21, here's the other side of the coin. For they knew God, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So here's an example of what happens when you don't give thanks, when you refuse to give thanks, where you just choose not to, and you just choose to revel in your little pity party for a while, it, what happens is our, they become futile. It's like the, the gerbil wheel spinning because you don't have any hope. So hope deferred makes your heart sick. And you alienate yourself from the presence of God and then become darkened. Now you can't see any light and you can't see any hope for your future. It's all dark. That's what happens when we don't give thanks. That's good. So that's where we don't want to go. 
Amen. And that, that should motivate us. Uh, that's why God's word is so powerful and so important. In that psalm, it says, how, what a beautiful thing it is to give thanks. And then it says in verse 4, you make me glad by your deeds. Amen. So when we think of what God is doing, what he's done, what he can do, our hearts become glad. Amen. So those are all, several of the reasons. You probably find lots more reasons why it is so important to give thanks. And then it's how do we do this in a practical way? Amen. Just do it. Give thanks. Start praising him. Uh, but Paul says, I've learned the secret. Here's the word, the secret. I've learned this secret to be content in every situation. Doesn't matter if I have a lot. Doesn't matter if I have a little. Doesn't matter if we eat at the keg or if we have beans and toast at home. Doesn't matter because that happy can't come from out there in circumstances. No matter how much stuff you pack in your cupboards and your drawers and everything. It's not going to make you happy and joyful. It's not going to produce the joy of the Lord it's a secret of being content and then you just say to yourself I'm fine I can only wear one outfit at a time I can only eat one meal at a time with this be content the word says be content with food and raiment you got everything you need the Lord you're my shepherd I lack no good thing Amen. That secret of being content. And he says, and then if things are not the way they're supposed to be, here's the recipe. Bring them, present them to the Lord with prayer and petition, asking him. That's what it means, petitioning with prayer. Father, I come to your presence with thanksgiving because you're good. You start telling the Lord all the things you're thankful for. Amen. And then you can ask for for more, the Lord says, you don't have because you don't ask. So, so ask, it's okay. With thanksgiving, thank you, God, that you are a giver of every good and perfect gift. And I really would like, have you ever had the Lord answer a prayer and you go, I barely even asked him for that. I, the, I think the thought crossed my mind, but, but here we go. We're so blessed, amen. Because the Lord, that's, that's his recipe for getting things to you is when you come with a grateful heart. So that's the how. Real simple. It's so amazing. When you get anxious, how are we going to pay those bills? And now we need a new car. It's only going to be about two years. That car's are going to be out. And then, and, then, and then this, and then that. And then what are we going to do? Psst. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough problems of its own. Be content. Today you've got your food and your raiment with these things. Be content. Cast the care of tomorrow onto the Lord for he cares for you. Amen. Thank you God. We don't know what car is next but you do. Thank you you came through on this and this and this. You surely are going to come through for that. Amen. And then, awesome. You start doing that together, powerful. Then the peace surpasses all understanding. Like, aren't you worried? Aren't you concerned? Don't you know? And it's like, nope. No, I, I have a peace about this. I have a peace about this. I refuse to go there. Amen. Aren't you, aren't you concerned? Like, this is phase one. You're not even done that. Aren't you worried about what's going to be? How are we going to pay for phase two? I trust in God, and I'm excited, honestly excited, that the same way that God had come through this phase, he's going to come through phase two, phase three, and on and on. I might be the little granny sitting up at the front going really, really excited <laughs> someday because saying, it all happened. See, it all happened. How? By trusting God and giving thanks. Amen. By not being anxious, it, nothing of the miraculous can come through when we're anxious. Faith doesn't work like that. Faith works by trusting our daddy. Real simple. Amen. So what's our conclusion? It's the greater one on the inside of you giving thanks. So dig deep. Find that within yourself. Find the God because it's the peace of God that transcends all understanding. It's not even yours. 
Amen. And Paul says, how on earth do I do this? Not like I've already attained it or anything. But he says, I've learned that secret of being content. I can do this through him who gives me the strength. It's not me. It's not my mind. It's not my faith. Oh, doesn't she have great faith? No, it's a faith of God. It's the gift of God. It's a peace of God. It's the strength of God. God and Paul says, I've learned the secret and I can do this through him who gives me the strength. So you've got enough strength to wake up in the morning and start giving thanks. Amen. Don't even just start blabbing in prayer, going, okay, God, I need this, I need you that, please do this and that. Just, really amen. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, because if you know God's presence is there, if he's proved himself, just give him a chance to prove himself. A Monday morning, last Monday, I was sitting before the Lord and I was thinking, okay, God, are we done here with, uh, we are done with this series of um, the names of God. Next week, I'll probably be doing uh, the soon coming king. What an appropriate ending to all this. But uh, just to say, I haven't ended this because apparently I just read this week that there are 400 names of God in the word. So we're, you know, so, you know, we might come back to this because I am so on a journey with this because every time I get a revelation of God in another area, it just blesses my heart because I go in, there's another part of God that oh, he's making available to me. And so I was wondering, Lord, are you really a protector? Like, I know, I know you are a protector and, uh, but are you, is that your name? And I opened the word, I shared with Gail, I literally just went like this to have my quiet time. I just thought the thought, and there was his name. And I'm just going, God, you blow me away. I love when you blow me away. And God is saying, give me a chance to blow you away. When you sit in his presence and you just wonder, I wonder if this really is true. Just give him a chance to prove himself to you. And you don't, do, you, you don't go there and enter that zone without entering his gates. Amen? With thanksgiving. And then he'll enable you to see beyond what he's got in store for you. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet. I forgot to wear my watch. I trust I'm somewhat on track. Yep. Good. Thank you, Jesus. I just preach myself happy. Yeah. Just talking about thankfulness, I'm very thankful. Oh yeah, I was going to share with you the, the practical miracle how I learned this. So uh, a few weeks ago, I'm on the back of the Harley with my husband and we're driving freeway. Did I, I didn't tell you this yet. Two days of being on the freeway, passing big transfer trucks, I'm going, okay, I see mountains over there and I see mountains over there. And I lean in and say, excuse me, hon, two days of the freeway, are we going somewhere? Like, I don't know your plan. So I never ask, I just hop on. As, so anyways, the answer I got back was a little bit, so I just <laughs> sat back quiet for a minute and I, I was crying a little bit thinking, okay, whatever. <laughs> and I started to thank the Lord on purpose for my husband. I thank you, God, that we can get away like this. And though my, I'm a little tired after two days of sitting on the back of this thing. I thank you, God. I started to thank the Lord for him. And then that night, he takes out all his maps. And for two hours, he is meticulously planning his route. And so I go over to where he is. And I get my knees. And I hold his hand. And I said, I don't know anybody in the whole planet more adventurous than you. And I don't know, and I just went on and on a little bit. And you know, my, I know it blessed my husband, but it did more than that. It changed my heart. It changed my heart. And so I, I, that's just a little bit of secret. So if something's actually irritating you or brought you to tears, maybe you can just stop and say thank you. Because you'll just, it just changes their, again, like Dave said, the art changes our perspective. Amen? So that's my little testimony. Amen. <laughs> you were the word at the beginning. The 
one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation is now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't walk on without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name. 